Hey, what's up guys, it's Moogalore here, and today we're going to talk about Ubisoft. Yes, that's right, Ubisoft is back in the media once again, and it's never good because they always put their foot in their mouth. And this time, it's involving the new Star Wars Outlaws that everybody's been talking about over the internet. And it's a two-fold problem. One is the female protagonist, who everybody's saying is ugly, and I definitely agree. And then also, the other problem is, that's right, the outrageous pricing that Ubisoft is decided they wanted to charge gamers for the many different editions that the game is going to have, which is causing a big problem um, with gamers. So before we dive into this video, make sure to subscribe button and notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. So Ubisoft, the last time we talked about them, there's been a big controversy because one of the executives that came out and said that in order for subscription-based service games, in order for it to become a norm, gamers have to get used to not owning their games and oh boy you you've seen what drama that caused over the internet and it seemed like it's just not stopping and they just keep doubling down especially what's going on with star wars outlaws so let's dive into this article so it says from the gamers gamers are mad about ugly star wars outlaw protagonists so it says water is wet the sky is blue and gamers are mad about women. No, we're not mad about women. And this is, here we go again. This is what we keep talking about. And we even talked about in our last video when they mention gamers, they always exclude women out of this. Because in order for this argument for their narrative to, be, to, to work, they have to exclude women out of this. So they can be able to target the males, especially the straight males. This is the only way they can be able to have this argument in order to make this, their, make this narrative grow is to keep attacking males. But there's also female gamers that also feel the same way, which we talked about in our last video when it came to Eve and Stellar Lake. Females, women themselves, they also love attractive looking female characters in their games as well. But let us continue. So it says Star Wars Outlaws dropped a new trailer this week and there has been a surprising amount of backlash towards the protagonist who many are now calling ugly. No, we're not now calling her ugly. We've been saying this since the game was revealed. Where have y'all guys been? Where have y'all been? He said, we've seen this a lot in the past few years from Mary Jane and Spider-Man. Yes, ugly as shit. To, to player character in Fable 4. Yes, also ugly as shit. To Jesse Fadden and Control. It became a conspiracy theory among gamers. And here we go again, throwing out that word or that term terminology, conspiracy theory. Anytime they want people to, and they want to misdirect people off of the actual problem, just throw out the, just throw out the, the term conspiracy theory. But how many things are going to continue to be a conspiracy theory until it's not a conspiracy theory? The overuse of the word is now making more people focus that actually want to see what the problem is every time they throw out this word conspiracy theory. And they don't get it. They don't learn. Every time they call something conspiracy theory, all it does is bring more focus on the topic at hand. They don't they don't understand it. So it says it becomes a conspiracy theory among gamers that developers are purposely making women ugly. With one of the examples thrown around a lot this year being Poison Ivy, who in Suicide Squad killed a Just League is a literal child. And they gonna to try to use this as all arguments when we've been pointing this out for the past decade of what's been going on. So it says it's entangled in a lot of other online conspiracies here we go the term conspiracy again but the major one of them all you'll see pop up in these threads are outlaws so-called ugly protagonists is that the company sweet baby inc had a hand in it their narrative consultancy firm but many gamers believe that they are pressuring developers and injecting their games full of woke themes apparently ugly protagonists fall under that umbrella yes it does Although, many more are in agreement that Outlaw's lead isn't ugly at all and just looks like a normal woman. Yes, your colleagues are in agreement with you guys. Not gamers. And we keep saying this every time, that gamers and the mainstream media are saying two different things. They're speaking, they're, they're speaking away from each other. Two different the narratives. It's a total disconnect from what the media is saying and what gamers are saying. So it says, what are gamers saying? Which is, this is what you should propose to be focusing on. What gamers are saying. What gamers are saying and what everyone else is replying. So, manga lawyer. Western activists trying to not destroy real femininity challenge impossible. The model from Star Wars Outlaws 
should sue laughing my ass off. And then we have Hi Hypnotic. Woke Ubisoft destroys Star Wars Outlaws. Female actress made ugly again for modernity. And then our boy Grums. The only explanation for this is the patriarchy is real. And we talked about this time and time again. They keep calling it conspiracy theory, but it, it can't be a conspiracy theory when you see something like this. This is the female protagonist right here from, from Star Wars Outlaw. On the right, you have the actual model, beautiful Latino woman, and then you have this, whatever you want to call this, this protagonist here from Outlaws. Now, you look at them. You put them side by side. Jaw structure, everything. Completely opposite of what you have from the model herself. You got this strong ass jawline, strong ass chin, very manly, very masculine. But then when you look over and you go over to the male character from the other Star Wars game, complete one to one transition. No problem. It's they perfectly transition him over to the game with no issue. They pretty much like twins, pretty much twins. And we talked about this in Cyberpunk with Aegis Elba, Hideo Kojima. But then when you look at someone like Alana, which, which we talked about in a, a couple of videos ago, Alana Pierce, you look at her in Cyberpunk, it looks nothing like her. But how come when it comes to these characters, the male characters, perfect one-to-one -one translation. Perfect. No issues at all. But yet, they're still saying to us that we're conspiracy theorists, that there's nothing going on. So, it says, people are calling the Star Wars Outlaws protagonist ugly, and I don't get it. She is literally, like, objectively so pretty. Like, if I saw her in real life, I would be obsessed with her. People are mad about the Star Wars Out Outlaws girl being ugly. And this is quotes from different people. So, it says, Sigourney Weaver was the hottest woman alive in 1979, and you're, and you're mad that this type of girl is making a comeback? Couldn't be me. Wouldn't be me. What are you talking about? What are you... What... And this is the thing. Now they're trying to use Sigourney Weaver, Weaver, as an example, trying to trying to say that we're that they're using her concept, the outlaw con, uh, model, and now they're trying to bring the Sig Sigourney Weaver, um, you know, look back and that we find her ugly because of certain, the Sigourney Weaver look, which makes no sense. Fans are still in love with Sigourney Weaver, especially back in Aliens. And what also hurts this whole argument right here that they're making is that Sigourney Weaver was actually, they actually put her in an Aliens game. And guess what they've done? One-to-one -one transition of Sigourney Weaver from the Aliens movie, the actress herself, was placed into the game and looked completely the same and still look attractive. Fans found Sigourney Weaver attractive back then. And still found her attractive in the game because they bore her over one to one. This is why you never heard the argument about Sigourney Weaver being ugly, her, her in game model being ugly in the Aliens game. You never heard that. You never heard it at all. That was never an argument then because they made a perfect one to one transition over. So make that make sense. So it said, we saw similar anger towards Horizon Forbidden West when Aloy was revealed to have slightly bigger cheeks and, as many people do, hair on, the, on her face. That's just how people look. Even more bizarrely, a lot of anger towards Outlaw's protagonist stems from her having a 70s hairstyle and fashion. Who? Who's saying that? Receipts, please. Who's saying that? No one is saying anything about her hairstyle. No one is even saying anything about her outfit. No one is saying that. And this is what I'm talking about. The journalist creates a straw man creates an argument that none of us as gamers are making no one's ever said anything about her hairstyle or her clothing at all no one said anything about that no one at all everybody's talking about how the model the real life model looks in comparison to her video game model there's a total disconnect between the two that's what people are talking about so it says but outlaw is is set during the original trilogy era which came out in the 70s. That's why she looks so much like Sigourney Weaver, who I promise you is not ugly. Who is making that argument? No one is saying Sigourney Weaver was ever ugly. Sigourney Weaver has a big male fan base from Aliens. Who is making this argument? This is what I'm talking about. These people are disingenuous. All these journalists do is gaslight 
and create arguments that none of us as gamers are making. We talked about this before. They cause the conspiracy theories when it comes to how female characters are being depicted. And they keep telling us that no, there's that there's so much involved when doing this uh, mo caption and everything like that, and why and how complex it is. And yet, to actually capture more like micro movements in the human face. So your face scans need to be more accurate and in general, a little bit more human, thus more flawed, 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 thus more flawed. Humans have a bunch of flaws on their faces. This is a very common part of being human. No one is making this argument at all. This is what makes it, the mainstream media so disingenuous. And where even bars, what even makes it even worse is that you will also have some people that works within the gaming industry that was trying to co-sign on this and, and, and gaslight you even more. And we talked about this with Alana Pierce. We've already proven this already. There's no conspiracy theory here. There's nothing here. It's, it's, it is what it is. They're intentionally doing this. And we're going to, and we have to, as our, as us, as gamers, we're going to keep pointing this out. Keep pointing this out. Don't let them gaslight you. Don't let them shame you. Keep calling them out and keep showing them receipts and let people see this for themselves. But besides the female protagonist, we also have another issue. And I think this is just as important as a lot of this woke nonsense that's going on within the industry itself. And we can't, oh, we can't forget this. So it's from Fandom Wire. It's 2024. Why is this a problem? It's a Ubisoft Civil War as fans um, rage out over a controversial Star Wars decision. Star Wars Outlaws has a big preservation issue before it's even out. So it says Star Wars fans are in for a treat this year as Ubisoft highly anticipated Star Wars Outlaws finally has a release date developed by Massive Entertainment and created with Lucas Games. The open world adventure game is slated to release on 30 uh, on the 30th of August 2024. Pre-orders are now open with an early access perk for gold or digital edition buyers, allowing them to play from the 27th of August. But while the hype is is at an all-time high for the game, a recent discovery has set alight some connect uh, contentions amongst fans. Star Wars Outlaws disc are worthless without internet. Oh boy, here we go guys. Star Wars Outlaws is a thrilling single player adventure which are far and few um, these titles these days. Yes, because everything's a multiplayer, everything's an online service game and everything. You really, you don't really get a lot of that single player adventure experience like you used to back in the day. This elevates the game's hype as you can expect it won't have the predatory pricing systems that a lot of multiplayer games do nor would it have annoying online DRM. However, there's a bit of a snag. While, while Outlaws won't feature any MTX or DM, um, DRM requirements, it seems you'll need internet access for at least one part installing the game. A tweet by Wario64 shows a close-up of the box art and it mentions internet required to install a game. Which means that the disc itself doesn't contain a build of the game, but only a, an installer that needs to connect to the internet and then download the build off the of Ubisoft server. It's disappointing that they have chose to go this direction as it essentially renders the disc useless as it won't be able to install the game without internet connection. And this splits the fans. And it has a lot of people talking about the situation. And Ubisoft is already under hot water, especially with a lot of their their business decisions and everything, and especially with their monetization schemes and practices and just their overall business model. And then here we are again, they just add more wood to the fire um, when it comes to the internet connection. And then we have said these games, can someone explain to me why many people are raging at Star Wars needing an internet connection to be installed? You're using the internet to complain about it on Twitter and the app you use 25 hours a day, eight days a week. It's 2024, why is this a problem? And then Thought Provoking says, why should it need an internet connection if it's a single player game? Your argument is the internet exists so everything should uh, should have to use it. And that's a really bad take. Yes, this, this is where the problem at. Preservation, which is the whole point of buying a game physically. And this is from archeology span uh, bird. Can't really keep a game if you gotta connect to the server to fill in what's not on the disk. Yes, and that's definitely a thing that everybody is upset about too. Yes, game preservation. You pretty much 
when you hold this box in your hand, you're pretty much holding a dud. You're holding a brick in your hand. It's useless. So if you don't have an internet connection, then what's the point? If your internet is down, you bought the game, you can't connect, you can't install the game. This is another form of control, and this is another way to get gamers to, to pretty much condition them to just go digital. This is what they're trying to do. In order to do that, you do shit like this. And then you have people like these games who will come in and fucking want to be a warrior and a protector of what these companies, these big mega corporations are doing. Because you have gamers like that who also reinforce and encourage these, these companies to continue doing shit like this. It's a single player game. It's not even a multiplayer game. And yet you need an internet connection to even install this game. So it says the overwhelming the overwhelming sentiment is that you always saw shipping ship, shipping the disc with an installer doesn't bode well for preservation, which is a valid point. Service and network outages still happen in 2024, and for them to temporarily void your ability to install a game is is flagrant. So not to mention, there's no guarantee that Ubisoft servers will remain functional. So you're basically buying a disc that isn't assured to stand the test of time. Moreover, it can affect the secondhand um, value market of the disc as it could be a one-time install. And that's another problem too, man. Like, Ubisoft can go defunct at any time. Ubisoft is not looking good financially or anything. So what happens if Ubisoft go, def go defunct? The game is gone. The game is done. It's over. It's over. There's nothing you can do about it. You remember back in the day when EA was was charging gamers, and this was like the early this was like the early 2000s where EA was charging gamers for an online pass. So not only did you have to buy an EA game, you had to buy PSN or Xbox Live. You also needed the code from EA to in, to unlock its online feature, which you had to pay an extra fee for. So when it came to the secondhand market. You could the game was useless because you didn't have the code because the code was a one-time buy, and of course they had to backtrack on that over time because fans gamers wasn't going for that, and this is something like that when it comes to having this this online insta installation. So it says the flip side of the argument is that everyone has internet access in 2024, and that steep majority of players complain about this won't be facing trouble downloading the game. However, this is an issue that isn't confined to the present. Game preservation is a hot topic among the DRM infested online games of today and single player titles like Star Wars Outlaws is going this route doesn't set a good precedence and that's the bad part about it. It's a single player experience. And then last but not least, he said there's never a good reason for single player games to have season passes and this is from the gamer and just to, just to explain what this article is saying is that now this game right here also has a standard edition gold edition and an ultimate edition um for for this game so the standard the standard and ultimate edition of outlaws cost 70 dollars 110 dollars and 130 dollars respectively that's without factoring any potential microtransaction either so why the mainstream consumers who aren't tied into the echo chamber like i am will see an addition like this and likely buy into the promises because why wouldn't they and that's the problem man see the thing is a lot of people have to understand you gamers have to also understand here is that a lot of us who are arguing and fighting against this we are a small bubble here we are a minority here it is the it is the normies it is the casual gamers who have no idea that this culture war is going on and the reason why a lot of these game developers are going through with their uh, is getting away with the practices they're getting away with is that is because a lot of casual gamers are uninformed. They go in, they see, hey, a Star Wars game. I'm looking forward to this. I like Star Wars. Hey, how much is this game? Oh, there's different versions. What comes with this? Okay, let me get the Ultimate Edition. This sounds really good. Oh, it got a season pass. Oh man, I can't wait to see what other content is going is is going to have moving forward after I buy this game. They don't know any better. They don't know anything that's going on. They're not going on Twitter seeing what the argument is about. They don't know what these journalists are talking about. They don't know what the gaming community is talking about. All they want to do is play a game. They want to play their favorite franchise, which is Star Wars, and many other franchises that's out there and other IPs. So they don't know what's going on. So the thing is, we have this. so what we have to do is we have to pretty much 
spread the message out there and let these gamers know what is actually going on here in order to minimize situations like this to where these developers are getting away with situations like this you already paid 70 dollars gaming is no longer a hobby it's a luxury and a lot of people can't afford it now and they're asking you for so much but giving you so little cutting content and everything and the reason why i always say that this is one of the other important things that we need really need to hammer down on yes the wokeness and stuff yes it got to go but that's only one part of the problem once you, if we ever somehow merit a miracle happen that this wokeness somehow goes away, we're still stuck with a problem here. Outrageous prices in the, in the gaming market as far as these games are concerned. Outrageous. And then also the practices with microtransactions, these live services. The problem is still here. And I think this is one of the more major, major problems that us gamers really, really need to hammer in. And this, in order to do this, we constantly have to keep pointing this out and keep showing them how ridiculous it, this is. And we have to make it so polarizing to the point that there, that this is poison. Like, yo, we shouldn't do this because if the gaming community hears that it has this feature in it, DRM, or it has microtransaction or a season pass in it, that if they find out about this, we're done. Our game is not going to make any money. So we have to we have to we have to make this so polarizing to them that going to consulting firms like Sweet Baby Inc. is also bad business for them. That's the only way we can hit them where it hurts is by constantly pointing this out, constantly drilling in, and constantly waking up the normies that hey, this is what's going on, and this is why you should care. But that pretty much wraps up this, this whole video. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this whole situation with Star Wars Outlaws? It is all a conspiracy when it comes to female characters and their and their depiction in video games. Or is there some merit in this argument here that they're purposely making female characters look more masculine um, compared to how men are being portrayed in video games when it comes to their real life counterpart in the in-game model? Definitely want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the standard when it comes to now games are now increasing in price and then they're adding in all these different things like online online connectivity for a single player game what are your thoughts on that as well so if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button subscribe button for more gaming content here on this channel this is moving lord sign off i'll see you game fiends later peace out